If you're into woodworking at all, you've probably heard about one of the hot new trends. <laughs> Not cat butt, but CLT, which stands for cross laminated timber. This is the first uh, CLT experiment that I tried personally. This is a sort of like stool mini table sort of thing made out of a couple of completely junky pallets that I recycled. I made this in uh, January 7th, 2016. And uh, it's been outside. I didn't even use waterproof wood glue for almost that entire period of time. There are no screws at all in the construction of this. All I used was a couple of clamps and wood glue. Just like the coolest thing ever, CLT um, is a technique that's being increasingly used in construction. In fact, you may have even heard about the so-called uh, wooden skyscrapers in parts of Southeast Asia that use CLT, which uh, is a little bit different of a process because instead of making minimally structural elements like this, they make giant beams out of CLT. And the, the key to CLT is that the grain of the wood is uh, s perpendicularly positioned. So in other words, the grain of these boards goes this way, and then the grain of these goes this way. So they're overlaid on top of each other in layers of uh, perpendicular opposed grains which creates tremendous strength so strong in fact that it can even be stronger than steel depending on what sort of adhesives are used to uh, bond the wooden layers one of the main reasons they're doing this is kind of sad but it's basically that humans are dipshits and we've cut down all the really amazing wood in the in the world except for what's left in a few threatened protected zones so all we have left to construct with nowadays is this uh, garbage fast growing uh, weak wood that practically disintegrates when you touch it and uh, so the solution to that that construction companies and lumber producers have come up with is CLT so basically what they do is they take garbage wood and then they cross lay it and they glue it with a really strong adhesive and that way they can sort of make the best of a bad situation. Um, I got really interested in this technique mainly because not only does the uh, interlaying sort of in intrigue me, the interlacing, but also um, just the fact that you're able to take crap wood and make really nice uh, things out of it using this technique but um, what I am hoping to do in this video not only to increase awareness of CLT but to show people uh, that they can actually build really nice things using dramatically less wood than you would normally, which is sort of the main draw of, of CLT for me, is that if you do it right, you're using effectively half the wood you would normally because of the interleaving. Although there are many different ways to build a stepping stool like this. Anyway, I was kind of amazed after I built this Believe it or not, I used very little glue and I just sort of slapped it together and I just could not believe that it lasted for basically a year outside, not even using waterproof glue and having people step on it and sit on it and leave heavy tools and crates and all sorts of stuff on top, top of it. The bottom line is that uh, CLT is just amazing because it's like every every layer reinforces every other layer so that um, even though it may seem like it should be fundamentally weak it's actually quite strong 
and that's just kind of miraculous to me. Um, just one more last thing I wanted to point out about this object before uh, I end this video is that I actually used a handsaw to cut three sides of this. These boards were actually um, almost twice as thick. They came out to about here. And I cut off several inches with a handsaw. I'm just really proud of that because uh, it took me like several hours to do each side. But it was like a good exercise in uh, patience and getting more familiar with the particular saw I was using and learning how to like do the fastest most accurate cut so anyway use a bandsaw if you're gonna do it because I, I definitely don't recommend using a handsaw so after finishing that first first piece of furniture um, about a year later I was thinking, I kept thinking over and over again in my mind, like, how much I enjoyed doing the CLT, and just how cool it was, and, and I kept thinking, what if I actually use some quality wood? So I made this, this month actually, and uh, this is Douglas fir, furling strips, uh, they're like, I think they're generally referred to as like, one by twos and I used let's see they were eight feet and I used eight so eight eight feet 64 total feet of lumber uh, of these furling strips to make this totally cool looking incredibly lightweight like it's like feather light as like I said one of the advantages of using the CLT is that you're using half the wood that you would normally for the same level of like structural area and uh, this was pretty easy I made it in three days and uh, this is the final product but I'm actually gonna show you how to build one of these from scratch each step of the way I used waterproof glue and uh, these screws there are four screws in this in addition to the glue that I used those are actually unnecessary screws I only added them because I was sort of getting nervous and thinking well what if the end boards fall off then it's just gonna look ridiculous uh, so I thought, why not use four screws to add even more structural support just to the outer uh, layer. Because this is really the only downside, I feel like, of using CLT for this sort of structural composition. And that's that you end up with these, like, edges where one of the um, boards is not aligned with the others. And that also, of course, affects the stability, obviously, because you got a little bit more weight on the outside but this is actually pretty stable see so yeah, how this is four foot by sixteen inches and uh... yeah it costs about fifteen dollars to make this and uh... i'm gonna show you how to make one of your own if you'd like um, as for the weight it's pretty sturdy. I think you could probably uh, put two or three people on here, maybe four people, without having to worry about any sort of like structural failure. Um, if you wanted to uh, really make this uh, extra strong, you can put another leg section like in the middle. But. I didn't think that was necessary because my wife and I are just using it as a footstool basically in our TV room. So yeah, anyway, just uh, if you'd like to learn how to build one of these, keep watching. Yeah, so this is my super high-tech workspace. A table piled with junk, 
and uh, I'm sitting on a couch. I got a clamp, my wood, <laughs> my tool. Okay, so I'm building another one of these CLT objects, although this one is like a slightly smaller sort of footstool type thing. My uh, wife is really tiny, so this is the legs are just going to be nine and a quarter inches in height, and it's only going to be like maybe two feet long. So the first step is cut the stock, and I learned the hard way from having done this a few times that it's best to start with the legs. So I cut one leg, and now I'm just using that as a template to mark and cut my additional legs with my chintzy little craftsman next tech uh, jigsaw which isn't a bad tool although obviously it's not for like heavy duty jobs and I have like a tiny tiny little artisanal blade on here which actually I love and it's like it's pretty much the best blade I've used so far for cutting wood and I've tried about like I don't know six different uh, wood cutting blades. This one is the best that I found so far. It's like extra narrow as you can see like a uh, thinner not thinner but you know what I mean like a slimmer profile so that you can cut like detailed scroll work and stuff like that but it just seems like the tooth count and the the thinness I think actually helps it to cut more efficiently especially for this like furling strip type stuff Douglas fur that I'm using. Okay, um, on to the next section. Alright, so that's all 16 pieces needed for the legs, eight on each side. And uh, now the next part is uh, to cut the spacers for the opposite ends of the legs. Those are super important. This is like really an easy technique to cut the spacers. Um, they only need to be as you know long as the uh, cross pieces are thick so square in other words and uh, the best way to measure that is instead of measuring the uh, width of a piece and then measuring it out is just to use one of the pieces to uh, make a square like this basically like that so then you get a nice square piece so I gotta cut um, 16 minus 4 of those I think so one tip I would recommend for cutting these is to uh, leave a little bit of extra space on the side in terms of the length because you can sand that off when it's done but if you cut it too short it's always gonna be too short and uh, I usually just use my utility knife right here to clean off this um, sort of like abrasion on the end there so this is one set complete uh, I was wrong about it being too short it's one short so there's seven spacers, of course. So this is just the preliminary, pre prelim, prelimin why can't I talk? <laughs> this is the preliminary lineup. Um, a nice thing about having all these long pieces of wood around is that you can use them as a straight edge to just sort of like get everything squared away. And uh, now I'm going to glue. So I put down some uh, newsprint to just kind of keep my table clean. And uh, exploded the uh, stack just to make it easier to glue. I'm going to start in the center and work my way outward with a very light coating. Then I'm going to line it up one last time before I clamp it. Alright, it's all glued. Now I'm just tapping 
the ends of these boards to make sure they're all lined up. This is sort of just fine tuning because I'm going to clamp it from end to end and then I'm going to do this again to make sure that they're absolutely flush and square before I set them to dry. When you have it pressed up against a flat edge like this, it becomes like really obvious which ones, if any, are out of alignment. Although keep in mind you're going to be like sanding this, so a minor alignment issue like this is actually just going to get sanded right out of existence. Although it doesn't hurt to just kind of gently squeeze the pieces to get them even more aligned. The, the key here is to not clamp it too tight just enough to where there's still wiggle room and I also offset the clamp sideways so that I could line it up like this when I clamp it to dry in a moment what I'm going to do is actually rotate this clamp 90 degrees down this way I love these big clamps because it, it almost seems like they were built for this kind of construction because the pads are basically exactly the size of the furling strips so uh, that, that makes me feel a lot more secure when I'm clamping these. You can actually see the intensity of the pressure when the glue starts to squeeze out. I actually clamp it as tight as I can go, even though you might say that that's not ideal because it might be... Uh, there might be a problem when you release the clamp and then the wood is like decompressing and that might put stress on the gluing but honestly I think it's a better strategy to um, put as much pressure as you can sort of like smash the glue into the wood fibers and create as much uh, of a flushness as possible I'm just wiping the excess glue into the cracks and on the edges here I'm going to flip it over and uh, press it down on both sides, trying to um, make sure that things are still flush. At this stage, I would also um, check the squareness with another flat edge on the other side, but I've already done that, and it was basically square. It's obviously not going to be perfect, but it doesn't have to be. Just close enough. So this next step isn't um, necessary, but it's really nice if you have the option. And since I already cut all the other legs for the other side, what I'm going to do is uh, wedge them in between here for spacers, which will basically keep, uh, keep these slats at just the right spacing as they dry which should in theory make it a little bit easier for me to get everything together when I add the top Can square those up Alright, so everything's all glued up. I waited 24 hours for each uh, section to cure. It's The structure is basically done. I did do one sort of extra and unnecessary step here. I put four screws in, one on each corner, because as you can see, the uh, sideboards are not really supported by anything other than the glue here. I'm not worried about that glue failing at all, but um, just to reduce the stress, I like I said, I put the screws in. Sort of a before and after. Okay, here's, here's how it looks raw. This is without any sanding or leveling. You can see there's a significant gap on a few of those boards, but after just 
maybe like five or six minutes of sanding with uh, one of these babies. This is the result. So now it's more or less evened off. And then the next step after that, and this is sort of just like panache, I guess you could say, is uh, rounding off the corner. Makes it look hella tight. <laughs> look at that, it looks awesome. So yeah, I'm just gonna continue uh, sanding, getting this all finished, and uh, the final step I do, which is, you gotta think about like how this is gonna be used. Like, first of all, it's going to be sliding on the floor, probably. And secondly, when people pick it up, they're going to be touching this edge right here. So, just sort of as an absolute final finishing step, I chamfer this down about an eighth of an inch on both sides. And then uh, I flip it over, and on the bottom, I chamfer all along here on this whole edge so that uh, it's nice and smooth on the bottom and slides nice and easy and doesn't get caught in the carpet or whatever. So yeah, that's that's pretty much it. And then it's basically done. You can paint it if you wanted. Although my wife seems to think that it looks fine just the way it is and she doesn't want me to paint it, so whatever. And uh, that concludes the uh, CLT furniture video. Thanks for watching. I hope you... Learn some stuff and uh, good luck with your own projects.